So here we are with Season 3, Episode 1 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Last season, there were a lot of build-ups, a lot of character development that I really enjoy, whether it was for Shadow Weaver or for Scorpia. And we got a lot of downtime for Catra because she had to get off of her high at some point. And uh, now she's kind of on the down, down low because she's getting punished by Hordak for allowing Shadow Weaver to escape. And also Shadow Weaver somehow made it to Bright Moon and she's just there with Adora. So we also have to figure out what Shadow Weaver has in plan for Adora other than the old plan that she had before. <laughs> And then there's like some first one tech or something that's out in the desert and like they definitely shouldn't, and by day I mean Adora, they, they shouldn't get to the desert because it's a dangerous, dangerous place. I said last season felt like a middle school phase because of how short it is and I didn't realize that season three was also short, but it's actually one episode shorter. <laughs> So, it truly is a middle school phase, considering that it's two seasons. <laughs> but we'll just have to see what this season has in store for us. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon and early access in the YouTube memberships. Other than that, let us get started. Alright, here we are at Bright Moon. Oh, it was when Shadow Weaver comes out. <laughs> No security in this place, I swear. <laughs> this is your prison. It's so nice. It's to spare you, but it is more than adequate as a whole. <laughs> you remove the cushion. <laughs> We've removed what makes it comfortable. This is the prison. Yeah. <laughs> I need to be there for the interrogation. I'm the only one who can no. believe it is dangerous. I will not let that woman. Yeah, you. she could also manipulate you. To you. Shadow Weaver raised you. She knows how to get in your head. That is true. Risk her manipulating you. Mm -hmm. When you're that confident, you're probably gonna get manipulated. Right, I guess we should all just head back to bed. Take a break. <laughs> She's gonna sneak in. Obviously unqualified. Oh, th they'll need a fucking trash talker. <laughs> What the shit? <laughs> hmm? Back in prison again. This is the prison? <laughs> it's too nice. <laughs> oh. Wow. Damn! Oh, to Adora, of course. That's why she was there first. Oh, she's in prison? Oh, this- wow, literally put her in the same prison where Shadow Weaver was? Oh boy, it was quite the hype. She slams this guy? The poor fella! <laughs> Hopefully something's there to catch him. Wow, to make an example. Oh no, it's definitely gonna be something. <laughs> fat fingered. <laughs> or fat clawed, I guess. Well, in this environment, unfortunately, yes, you don't get to win. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. Sounds like more than friends, honestly. <laughs> yup. Now she's trying to get her away from here before she can hurt Scorpia any further. Mm. You guys having a fucking stare down? <laughs> Just weighing out who is gonna fall asleep first? My god, these two. Meanwhile, Glimmer. 
he's, 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 she's fucking manipulating you. <laughs> Damn, man fell asleep and had one drew out immediately. <laughs> it's not gonna stop. <laughs> How'd you get this outfit? is just sleeping soundly. I think she know that. I was, she, I was gonna say she knows that immediately when she says she died. That is... I mean, look, Kyle is there, alright? And y'all didn't fucking take Kyle with y'all. I don't know about Shadow Weaver. She is a mercenary. <laughs> I'm strong enough to face her now. I need to know if she's truly changed. If the woman who raised me still has some good deep down inside. Nope, that's that motherly bit <laughs> deep deep in down inside her. <laughs> yeah, at the bottom of the fucking barrow. I escaped from the void out. Paid the price. Prayed the price. <laughs> that's why she's got all this. <gasps> Maybe consult with the people of the land before we go further. Your Majesty. Hey! <laughs> Got caught. A magic trick? <laughs> After all your kidnapping and mind wiping, I am just looking for a reason to serve up a little payback. <laughs> oh. Oh. To hurt Adora. Glimmer. You really come in here to put down the hurt, dude. Yeah, I'm watching you. The moment I laid eyes on you, I knew you were special. Of course, of course. You were special? No. <laughs> what you always told me was that I didn't matter. I was special only as long as I obeyed you. Why are you here? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's happening to you? It's the call of my magical powers coming to me. I am Jai. Oh, good for you! What's all this? Don't try it. <laughs> of course. I mean, like, don't try and cure her. I'm going to heal you, Shadow Weaver, and then you will answer our question. Do we have a deal? No. I was afraid of your heart, but no. <laughs> I can help you control your magic. As long as we do it in private, right? In secret. In return, you trust me. Trust that I'm not stupid. Trust that I'll see right through your mind game. Stop lying for once. And trust me with the truth. <laughs> that stinger does not help. <laughs> oh. Quiet! I've got a lot to cover with you today. He's he's you know, he has been hurt. Oh, it's that. It could be. They're missing something. Oh, it's that the same place that they're. It's in the desert. We should send her out ASAP. Tatra is the only one of whom we sent to be silent. Oh no! To be silent! Because of Catra? Wow. Catra has been incredibly successful at getting these tests for us. Mmm. It's coming from here. Look at her vouching for Catra. Oh, the Crimson Wave. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. Her runes don't. She just carries everywhere. No wonder she's so powerful. <laughs> you must learn to concentrate. Focus your power. I've tried this before. I can't get it to work. She tried for like two seconds. Come closer and allow me to help you. Ah, you're stepping past the barrier. That's not good. Afraid of your power is a spiraling out of control. Let yourself feel. Well, you know, she does need new... She has, like, the parasite stuff, so she does need a new runestone. What are you doing? <laughs> it's card tricks. <laughs> they could only work for so long. He intends to bring me 
through the rest of the Horde's army through this portal and use them to conquer it. So his army. Army? There's more of the Horde? Of course. So large, we cannot even comprehend. He came from out of space. Hold off Hordak's paltry troops, will you? Paltry troops. Guess he's getting close to finishing this portal machine now. Because then trap the... Something he didn't have before. A bright mine. With the rulers of machines. Portals to other worlds? It's ridiculous. Then what is Entrapped they're working on then? We on Isteria have no concept of a universe beyond our reach. Yeah, they don't even know. The evidence stands before us. <gasps> oh, she right is the first one, and first one comes Portals from out of space. Ooh. Ah. Oh, I thought she came on a comet, honestly. <laughs> I gain nothing from lying. Adora is different from us. That is true. Just anyone could bring a dying woman back. Anyone could become Shira? Don't listen to her, Adora. It's a hard decision, honestly. Oh, off she goes. Damn, dude, that fucking thousand yard stare that she was having. Alright, right back to the first one tech to talk to Light Hope. You must know what I really am. Where I came from. Oh. Hold on, she's lagging. Why are you asking for the clarification of events you witnessed? I was a baby. Babies don't remember things. Well, s s only some. <laughs> Oh, seeing the origin, her origin, anyways. This is the portal that you came through. I think, yeah, I think they've shown portals before, right? The first one came from beyond the stars. They made the sword so that it would only reach China Station. That's why you can read all these. <laughs> I do not understand. Did I have a family? Did I go back? A portal brought me here. Could a portal take me? But your family is here, don't you think? Your home is here. Ah, that's why they're stuck here. No, no, no. You aren't listening to me. You are behaving erratically to bear the power of Sheila. Well, she must know the fucking history. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you can definitely see why Mara felt the way that she did, alright? Yeah, because you're not giving her a fucking choice! You're not fucking explaining to her! I'm not sure yet, but I think I know what I have to do. Open a portal? <laughs> People have been hiding the truth from me, so I'm gonna go look for answers myself. In the desert? I'm going to the Crimson Wraith. I'm going to follow the message from Mara. I know it's incredibly dangerous, but this is my choice. You don't have to come with me. Adora! Yeah, they're your friends. <laughs> Especially now that you've told them of your plan. No, oh, somebody's going to Beast Island. Or is he or is she actually going to the Crimson Waste? I am not willing to be to punish those who betray my tribe. Your former force captain has proven to be compromised. Not a lot of trust when you've got fucking spies all around, you know? Take a lesson from me. This is what happened. I would have been trapped this gonna. Oh. You're the failure. <laughs> <laughs> you need me, just like you needed Shadow Oh. I have no idea how to run this place. Oh. You know how to do is hide in your room. Oh. Oh, he is injured too, so. Oh, oh, she's got nothing to lose being sent to the Beast Island. There has been a change. Going to the Crimson Waste. I saved your life. You're welcome. <laughs> In the Crimson Waste. The Crimson Waste? It's a total dead zone. Nothing survives out there. Well, you'd rather be there than Beast, exact, uh, Beast Island? Ah, don't worry. You'll find something there, Catra. You'll be fine. 
I do like that Catrus to Sal, you're like, all right, got nothing left to lose. I'm just going to fucking talk shit on you. <laughs> Can't fire me when you're already firing me. Am I right? <laughs> all right. Well, we're getting to, we're getting to, uh, what the heck is it? We're, we're getting to the Crimson Ways as, uh, as we discovered last episode, you know, and, uh, Adora has also figured out her past and all that. You know, we as the audience kind of already knew, but this is her first time finding out about it. So good for her. <laughs> but I'm going to go write my notes and we will be right back to the center. Okay, so this part with uh, Dora talking to Light Hope and also it finally clicked in my head that this isn't Light Hope's hair. This is actually, this is a hood that she's been wearing. I mean, I kind of figure it was a hood, but like I, I kind of just put that together with just her head but like looking at her from like a different angle I finally realized that <laughs> Light Hope actually has a shaved head this whole time. Anyways what I wanted to talk about was this part where Light Hope says oh, you're behaving erratically to bear the power of Shira is an honor but like the problem with this phrase right to bear the power of Shira is an honor is you have to understand the culture. You have to understand the history to know that uh, to know why it is an honor to bear the power of Shira, right? Adora has no history with that. She didn't even know that she was the first one until this episode. So you can't just fucking say that. Oh, it's an honor for Sh it's an honor for you to be Shira. You know, you don't you don't get to choose. You're chosen. It's again, like, why would she give a shit? All right, she was raised by the Horde. All right, for all she knew before she got the sword and everything, being with the Horde, being the Force Captain would have been an honor for her because that's the history that she grew up with. Not growing up with fir the First Ones, right? And their culture and everything. So it's, uh, but again, like you have to give some, uh, some, some grain of salt for Light Hope because she is, in fact, chat GPT, so. <laughs> She doesn't know any better, you know? She's still learning. <laughs> Alright, so that was Season 3, Episode 1 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you guys. For me, I thought that this was a pretty good opener. We've got the big reveal shown to Adora that she is not from this world and the reveal to the other rebels that there are stuff outside of this planet. You know, life doesn't end in space. <laughs> There's so many more other life form that's happening out there and that Hordak is also from outside this planet. And it does kind of make me wonder if the reason why Hordak got stuck here in the first place was because of Mara, but like that was a thousand years ago, I think. So I don't think that's the case. Okay, I had to look at my Shira season one notes, but yeah, it has been a thousand years. So understandable why society now doesn't understand or doesn't know that there are worlds outside of theirs. But I've got two things I wanted to talk about, just Adora and Katra as per usual. But here in the beginning of the scene, we see Shadow Weaver just standing there creepily at her, ready to ready to, to touch her and all that before Adora wakes up and then Shadow Weaver uh, gets weak because as she mentions later on, she's used all of her magic in order to escape and, and, and get here. And you know, now she's a dying woman and all that. Adora seeing that Shadow Weaver is here, she can't rest because it's Shadow Weaver and she just wants to know what Shadow Weaver is here for, but Angela and uh, and Castaspella won't let her in because they know that she has a personal relationship with Shadow Weaver and she knows that Shadow Weaver could probably manipulate her, to which they are correct. And Adora is just so confident that she uh, that she's able to see through Shadow Weaver's manipulation and all that. And it's just like, no. Confidence is going to be the key in you getting manipulated by, by Shadow Weaver. You know, you have to come in there with just a grain of salt for Shadow Weaver, but you have to understand that for her, right? Even if she says the truth, there is an underlying ulterior motive uh, in her, right? You can't trust her to actually just be like, even if she is saying the truth, which we know that she is, she is saying the truth, but she's doing something else right I, I said it before shadow weaver is a mercenary and you cannot you, you can trust them that they will do the job but like whether they'll go off on their own and do their own stuff or they're gonna switch side again if they have a much more promising aspect which i don't really i'm not really 
I don't really think Shadow Weaver's planning on doing that. I think she's much more of like, I'm gonna do this stuff on my own. So like, you can, you, you know, you can like let her be there to like get the information that you need and all that, but like to actually need her help and all that. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's up to you. I personally wouldn't recommend it. Even if uh, Adora says that Shadow Weaver can change, right? Because she is putting her own experience into this. Like, hey, I was I was raised in the Horde and I, I got out and I've changed and I've become a better person. So there's just a chance, just a small little inkling, deep, 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 deep down in Shadow Weaver that there is something good. <laughs> I kind of get it, but... It's, a, a, and like, I, I believe in second chances. I definitely do. I don't know if Shadow Weaver's on her second chances or not, but I, I do believe in second chances and like, you should allow, but like, uh, but look, this is me straight out of it. Like, I, I, I know that Shadow Weaver has some other ulterior motive. The show just keeps giving me fucking stingers and her wincing at Adora, kind of the same thing as her wincing, not wincing, but like, you know, squinting. <laughs> trying to squint as much as she can in that mask. It just her squinting at Adora the same way she's like squinting at Catra, right? The way that she just goes and manipulates Catra. Like, it's the same thing that she's going to do for Adora, unfortunately. And again, again, as I said, Adora is a little bit too confident in thinking that she can tell Shadow Weaver's bullshit. But the reality is, if you are confident, it is so much easier for you to be manipulated and especially during this time where shadow weaver is like dying and so it, it and, and it's an un, it's that unfortunate feeling of like even though you know that your your mom or your mother figure was like a piece of shit <laughs> especially once you've come to realize all of this abuse that she has done to you and uh like uh, not here in this situation but a little bit further in in the beginning of this a conversation between shadow weaver and adora right adora is just like oh you you would say that i'm special well actually you would tell you would tell me that i meant nothing and that i was only special when i obeyed you so like she's able to get at it, it, she's she's able to bring that part out it's just like hey i know your tricks so like don't fucking bullshit me with that and like we even see glimmer in the back just like smirking about it like yeah adora can't won't fall for your tricks but even then right it's that unfortunate tinkling feeling inside you that even though you know that they've done all this bad in the end they're still your mother or your mother figure and the fact that she is dying uh adora says it right i can't have you suffer like this i would presume this is what Shadow Weaver wanted. She wanted to get healed and that's why she went to Adora because she knew that she could manipulate Adora into doing this. Uh, and also like the, the, the fucking music and the stingers that keeps putting, it, they, that they keep showing us at Shadow Weaver. It really, it, uh, again, the ulterior motive, like what is Shadow Weaver planning on doing with Adora? Because like, oh yeah, sure. She wants to help Bright Moon and she wants to help Adora defeat the Horde. But like after that, what does she want to do? And so I wrote in my notes, maybe she's trying to siphon off of Adora's runestone with her parasite magic. Cause we know that that's the reason she's able to get all this power. And she did that with the Black Garnet. But now that she lost her connection to the Black Garnet, I again assume that she's trying to find a different runestone to siphon power out of. And if she's able to do that with Adora, that's you know, it's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be pretty powerful. So, again, we'll just have to see what Shadow Weaver has up her sleeves. <laughs> She's that one character that all the other characters don't trust, but they unfortunately have to have her there along, and Shadow Weaver will eventually get what she want, and we'll just have to see when it happens. But on the bright note, at least she got Adora to learn how to use her healing magic, so hopefully, you know, if Catra gets injured during the Crimson Waste or something, Adora could use her healing magic, so good for her. <laughs> Anyways, Shadow Weaver is healed and she held up her bargain, you know, tells the truth. She's only here because she has nowhere left to go. She's been betrayed. Although she says, I've been betrayed by Catra, to which, like, should have expected it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you yeah, really should have expected her betrayal. So, like, don't fucking say that as if, like, oh, Catra betrayed me. Like, you've been treating her like shit this whole time. What did you fucking expect? <laughs> 
I feel like I kind of mulled over this whole situation already, but this is also the part where Adora finds out about her true origin, her true identity, why she's able to read first one tech this whole time. And you know, I'm very surprised. I, I guess that's just in their genes that they're able to read first one language. She was a baby when she came here. Like, how is she able to read this? It's just in her genes. That's just how it is. <laughs> She doesn't learn first one language or anything. Nope, that's that that's that. You know what? Now I think about it, Adora is able to read it. So like, she really she really should like start to learn how to translate it at the very least. You know, for these people to so then they can dig more into first one tech. I mean, I know Entrapta would love to. You know what? That is one thing that maybe they could try to get Entrapta to 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 come back to their side. You know, but. I, again, I, I, for Entrapta, I still think of her as like a mercenary, but not as bad as Shadow Weaver. You know, it, 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 you just need to give something that's much more enticing for Entrapta to have to come back. <laughs> After hearing about her origin, she immediately goes to where Light Hope is in order to try to get her to explain what the heck her origin is. And uh, she, she wanted answers from Light Hope, and unfortunately, Light Hope doesn't really give her that much of an answer and especially an answer that she wants and uh, and also with light hope telling her that like she doesn't really she doesn't really get a fucking option she she doesn't get to choose and that's like that's not something you want to fucking tell people like oh yeah you've got no option this is your only way you were chosen and so you fuck you you know it's and, and and you know sometimes it's it's just it, it's just how it is when it comes to these shows you know a hero who didn't want to get chosen but had to step up and I kind of already mentioned about like the whole like you should be honored that you were selected as Shira and all that and it's again she has no culture behind it so like why the fuck would she think that it's an honor and like it's unfortunate that Light Hope refuses to explain why Mara did her thing and then she just straights up tell Adora that she had no choice and so Adora fucking leaves and Light Hope's just gonna be like oh man seems like history is repeating itself <laughs> come on now Light Hope one needs to understand the other person's mistake in order to learn from it right so like what did Mara do exactly and like what cause Mara to have to uh, destroy these portals and ruin the connection of the Shira line and all that. And oh yeah, that also kind of makes sense considering that Mara destroyed the portal so no more first ones could go back to Etheria and that's why with Adora coming here. So like there are first ones just chilling out there somewhere in other planets and they're still, you know, producing babies and all that. <laughs> Okay, I'm still laughing at this scene where like she showcases the porto, which again, I believe that's one of the vision that she saw of the porto. I thought I thought that this porto was going to just have like a baby plop right out of it. You know, that's <laughs> this is a pretty high porto now that I'm thinking about it. Like, did she levitate down there to the ground? <laughs> Although I do find it very funny that like <laughs> a porto opens up <laughs> and one of the first ones is just like, oh shit, it's a porto. Quickly, chuck a door into it. <laughs> Hopefully it'll take her to the theory. <laughs> but no, probably, you know, maybe her parents loved her or something and like the portal just happened to open directly underneath Adora while she was laying on the crib or something, you know? <laughs> My baby found through a portal, uh, RIP, you know? <laughs> Okay, so Adora knows that she's off planet, and so she asks, "Do I have a family? Can I go back?" To which I, I, I say, and it's kind of the same thing that Light Hope says, is that, well, it's not really your home anymore, but you know, like your family, your new family, anyways, is here, and like I, I, but I do definitely get like wanting to. Uh, go to go and meet your real parents the person who you know made you and all that and hopefully had a lot of love for you before their their kid got swiped by a porto so I definitely understand that uh, and you know she mentions about like oh a porto could take me there so could a t porto take me back to where my family is and I believe this is here when Light Hope says uh, when Mara cuts us off from the rest of the universe she destroyed our portal capabilities Attempting to open one now would have devastating consequences. What is this? 
devastating consequences. Is it like even worse than when Entrapta tried to hack into the planet through the black runes? I just fucked up the, uh, you know, fucked up the environments and everything. You know, maybe a portal opens up so much, it just creates a black hole instead, you know? It, it, and the whole, the whole planet gets fucking sucked up. Who knows? But it does make me wonder about like, okay, so Horlack wants to open a portal. And it makes me wonder if like, if him doing the whole opening up the portal right now with that also be, you know, part of the devastating consequences. You know, like, if it's a devastating consequences, like, the planet's gonna implode or something, at that point, I would presume Hordak just <laughs> wants to get off off of this fucking backwater planet. <laughs> he just wants to get the fuck out of here. He's, he's tired of everybody here. <laughs> Adora, pissed at Light Hope for not giving her the answer that she wants, goes back home and decides that she wants to find this portal hopefully find something that's related to mara and learn about her history hopefully you know i mean we still got madame raz she's I, I she's crazy you know she'll probably speak in cryptic stuff but maybe if you hang out with her enough you might learn something from her just maybe we only seen her for one episode like that's literally it we have not seen her come back <laughs> this whole entire time yeah, I assume she's gonna. She wants to learn a little bit more about Mara, and I assume we're going to learn a little bit more about Mara. But right now, her destination is onto the Crimson Waste, and so that's where we will see her in the next episode, I presume. But until then, we gotta backtrack and head on over to Catra. So Catra wakes up locked inside Shadow Weaver's cell. Of all the cells she's locked up in, it's Shadow Weaver's. God, dude, Hordak really has a way, you know. <laughs> what a fucking dick. <laughs> but I, I enjoy that she wakes up and like one of the first thing that she sees are all the marks and it's just like, oh shit, this is going to be me next. I'm going to be stuck in this prison for however many days that Shadow Weaver has carved into the wall. She have claws? Is that her gl I think it's her gloves, right? That's doing that because like... My god, dude, these walls are really malleable if it's e that easily scratched. After Catra wakes up, we see Scorpia coming in here on her uh, super secret dangerous mission. And, you know, how she got here? Well, she just tossed somebody overboard. <laughs> that's just her... Uh, that that's, that's just her signature move, fucking tossing you overboard at that poor unfortunate soul. But she's here to save Catra. You know, she is her friend and everything, as Scorpia says. You are everything to me, which honestly, I think that's a little bit more than friends. I don't know if I would tell my friend that they are everything to me. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should give it a try. <laughs> Actually, before that scene, we've got Catra telling Scorpia to stop it, right? Stop trying to help her. But also that uh, Catra says, I never stood a chance. I did everything right. I thought I could prove myself, but it doesn't matter what I do. I don't get to win. Shadow Weaver was right. <sighs> it's, and it's, you know, for Catra, this is the only place that she knows. So when you're born in this environment, and I mean, I kind of talked about this in like episode six, right? Like she's, she, she, she's doing all the things. She's, she's working hard. But she's getting no accomplishment from it because fucking Hordak is the type of work. Uh, it's a type of leader, <laughs> type of uh, he's a CEO who only cares about the result. He doesn't care if the productivity in the horde has gone up 400%. He doesn't care if the first one tech, the portal tech, has actually been going, has been skyrocketing because of Catra's uh, successful skirmishes. He doesn't give a shit about any of that because. Those things, they're just minimal steps, but all these failures that Catra does, that's a big backward step for him. And he doesn't like that, right? And it's because progress is slow for him. He wants it done immediately. And because progress is slow, he doesn't see that as, as progress, right? But he sees all these failures as setbacks and it's just like, okay, we can't have any setbacks. And especially with like Shadow Weaver doing all these fucking setbacks. And now we've got Catra doing all these fucking setbacks. No bueno for Hordak, right? No bueno. And for Catra, this tells her, this trains her to know that she shouldn't be doing what she's doing, right? She, <laughs> maybe she should start lying flat, you know? <laughs> the, the lying flat movement. 
<laughs> but she's working hard in this corporate that does not fucking give a shit about her. And she's internalizing what Shadow Weaver is telling her. And then we've got uh, Scorpia telling her that, you know, I care about you. And so here we have this moment where Catra was starting to feel like she's opening up again, right? You really care about me. And uh, we've got Scorpia, right? Of course I care. You're my friend. <laughs> you're our leader. You're 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 everything to me. You know? Holy shit, dude! What a what a fucking confession out here. And Catra has, you know, a bit of a smile, a little perhaps a little bit of a caring smile before she kicks that off with just a menacing smile, uh, a menacing laugh, and tells her, "Caring about people is what got me into this mess." And it's just like, damn, dude. Like, I, I mean, I, I kind of expected this, right? She, she, she cared, unfortunately, about Shadow Weaver. She wanted that acknowledgement from her, and and when she finally got that acknowledgement, right, that feeling like Shadow Weaver does care about her, boom, she gets, uh, she, she gets betrayed by Shadow Weaver. And when she was being vulnerable with Scorpia, boom, she gets punished for it because she told the truth. And the fucking spy babies were there. And, and Hordak, again, is just that fucking CEO who's just making up rules just to punish people. And it's just like, yo, dog, like, we're we're obviously not playing the same game. So, like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing, you know? And so we've got Katra, who unfortunately has never had gotten any positive reinform reinforcements nor just anything positive from her opening up and being vulnerable. So the only thing that Cantor can do is to push Scorpia away and tell her to not rescue her, tell her to, and especially not to get her in trouble as well, because she doesn't want to hurt Scorpia. So it's an unfortunate thing, but you know, that's just on par for the course with these type of people. And especially again, Catra has already felt betrayed by Adora. So like she's been trying to keep things at a distance. And now when she's trying to, now that she's actually going closer and then she's get in, in trouble again, right? Of course she wants to stay distant yet, uh, yet again, and especially probably put even more effort into it. Funny enough, uh, Catra tells Scorpia that it's her caring about people that got her in trouble, but it's Entrapta caring about Catra that got her out of her punishment. Although Catra doesn't really see that as like getting out of her punishment. She's, it to her, it's just uh, out of the frying pan and straight into the fire, literally. <laughs> Catra might not see that as like a, a helpful thing at first, you know? I, I mean, Entrapta was there, it's just like, hey, I helped you, <laughs> you should be happy. It's just like, well, fuck, instead of going to Beast Island, I gotta go to a fucking, Crimson Waste? Ugh, fuck, you know? But again, uh, Entrapta cares enough about Catra to where she actually knows that Catra has been doing perfectly well. I mean, that whole thing I was talking about, right? The whole uh, the Horde's productivity rate has increased by 400%. They have gotten more first one tech than ever because of Catra's skirmishes. She's doing great for the company, but again, Hordak only sees tiny progresses and he doesn't he doesn't want that he wants big major progresses and Catra's not giving that to him and and she's getting all these setbacks and everything and you know you can you can accomplish 100 great things but the moment you do one bad things that's all everybody's going to think about and so I really appreciate Entrapta standing up for Catra and Entrapta is like the only person in this whole group who isn't afraid of Hordak because of just the way that she is. And again, again, I really appreciate Entrapta helping her out, even if Catra might not realize it. And I just really like that this is an example of friendship, you know, this whole feeling that Catra has tossed aside, this this whole idea that she mocks uh, Adora for, like, oh, your friends are gonna come and help you. What are you gonna do, the power of friendship or something? But again, Katra, it's what defeated you at the siege of Bright Moon. It's what pushed you and your uh, pushed your robot army out of the Whispering Woods. And here now, it's what got you out of Beast Island and the many other punishment that Hordak has plans for you. Heck, we even got Scorpia, who's willing to run away from the Horde, right? She's willing to betray the Horde for you. Uh, that's power of friendship right there. <laughs> so towards the end, Catra goes to Hordak, where Hordak wanted an audience to showcase what he does to 
people who are failures and worthless and, and, and you know, betray his trust and all that. To which, by the way, this is the audience? Wow, that's really small, Hornak. <laughs> very, uh, it's a very tiny, uh, low uh, army you've got there. But also, it definitely makes sense with Hordak not really having his main army, because that's what uh, Shadow Weaver mentions, right? He wants to open up the portal and get his whole army in. I That's what I sort of suspected too. But because his main army isn't here, that's why he's also so fucking frustrated and he has all these like orphan children that he's taking in and have to indoctrinate them into the horde and everything. And so like his army is not at 100%, maybe it's probably like at 10%, but because Etheria is such a backwatered planet, they're having a hard time fighting against this m paltry 10%. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, dude. Just imagine that. You're just, you're over here like, man, the Horde's been winning Etheria and it's just that they've been taking over and everything. And then you find out this is not even their main army. This is just some fucking army that they've been working on for like the past how many years since the war started? <laughs> they've got a main army that's been waiting this whole time. Fuck! Yeah, I really need to uh, stop this whole portal technology, especially if it's going off-world. Woo! I feel like I kind of mentioned this before, but Hordak saying here that like, oh, I'm not, there, there's nothing I'm willing to do to punish the people who betray my trust. You know, I'm so trustful. I give you guys my trust out here. But like, if you were actually trusting people, you wouldn't have fucking spy babies, all right? Or one spy baby anyways, that is always there at the right moment because of course it is, right? If you trust them so much, do you really need to be looking at them on the CCTV, listening to the audio and hearing what they're what they're fucking talking about? I don't think so. All right, I don't fucking think so. You know what it reminds me of? Reminds me of um, a boss that I used to. I don't really work with them in particular, but what they would do is that they would have like they would put on a mask and like be you know a nice person or whatever. I don't never really fucking trusted that shit and especially i didn't trust it after like uh we had a slow day and you know we kind of finished most of the stuff already and it's a slow day so we're just uh, we're just lacking oh we're slacking off a little bit what can you say we finished our job early what do you fuck you want us to do <laughs> but she saw us on the cctv and she sent a message to the manager who then had to come over to us to be like, hey, so like the boss is watching us through CCTV right now. So like you really got to start working. And it's just like, the fuck, bro? You're fucking spying on us through your CCTV just to fucking DM the manager to tell her to get us to fucking work? Like, fuck you. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Anyways, I wrote my note saying Catra without nothing to lose is dangerous Catra. Yes, damn, dude. The way she talked back to Hordak, right? Like she, uh, again, she knew that she was going to be silent. So like, fuck it, right? If you're firing me, if you're kicking me off, I'm going to say what I want to say about you. So she tells him that he, he's fucking useless. No, she did the Uno reverse card on him <laughs> and it really fucking pissed him off. I, I really enjoyed that, you know? So you're the failure. <laughs> Got their reaction, dude. She's just over like, oh fuck. <laughs> Why does Kyle look so tall? Did he grow up? What, what's going on? I thought he was short. You need me just like you needed Shadow Weaver. You don't know what the hell you're doing yet because you have no idea how to run this place. All you know how to do is hide in your lab. And the man's over here fucking gripping his fist as she says he can't even defeat a group of teenagers. <laughs> God, I just love him. He's just over here like, oh. <laughs> but he decides to channel that anger to be a little bit more condescending as he's just like, all right, you know, the whole punishment thing that I said I was going to do to you, I'm not actually going to do to you. In fact, thank you to your friend. She has convinced me to change the punishment. You're going to go to Crimson Ways. Congratulations. <laughs> and drop the <laughs> in the background. Hey, I did it. I saved you. You know, hi, Catra. I saved your life. You're welcome. <laughs> Doesn't even wait for Catra to thank her. <laughs> Just, you're welcome. I did it. <laughs> Congratulations, Catra. So yeah, Catra's not happy to go to the Crimson Waste. Adora will be there though, so you know. I mean, she won't be happy to see Adora. She's definitely not happy to be in the Crimson Waste, but you know, you get to see Adora, so that, that's nice. Probably, that's good. And Adora has to use her, heal her new healing abilities at some point, so you know, 
Hopefully you don't get injured or anything, Catra. Ooh. <laughs> that would be really bad, you know? I would assume Entrapta is coming with them because she knows the high-tech stuff, so she has to be there. Entrapta likes working with Catra. Even if the way that uh, Entrapta is, right? Like, where it really feels like she does put her own personal interests in front of everything else, she still actually does care enough about other people to pay attention to the things that they do, right? Like with her paying attention to what Katra is doing and, and even the way that she feels sad initially when Katra told her that the princesses had abandoned her and whatnot, so. But, uh, Again, I thought this was a great introductory episode, and if I have anything else to say, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I will see you guys in the next episode.